All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, Twitch chat. Hope everyone's having a good day. Welcome back to Let Us Play. I'm your host, Father Evan. Uh, we're going to be diving back into Skyrim, an early stream today. Got a train to catch this afternoon. So let's go ahead. Let's dive. And is the audio... Uh, concerned that the audio is not working, because why would it? The one day I forget to check and make sure the audio is working just fine. Nope. One moment. I found the magic button. Okay, so last time we started our adventure as Anselm the Monk from uh, the Imperial College. And we were working our way towards... Winterhold for the College of Mages because I bet they'll have lots of books. But we kept going the wrong direction. Because we kept starting here and somehow always veering left when I thought we were going right, so. So we're just going to go east for a bit. Get all the snow berries. Is that the path we want to take? That is a path we could take, but there's a mammoth on it, so... We had enough mammoth in the other game we were playing. That's the path we want to take right there. Forsaken Cave. I don't think that's the place we want to go. Ooh, nightshade. It's a potato. try going around the mountain or over the mountain probably around just given the fact that we are role playing as a, a monk we're not the most athletic thought I heard someone knocking I am early today step zero I have a uh, train to catch I still wanted to stream. I didn't want to cancel. 
another one. It's a fort. I wonder if they'll be friendly. They're not friendly! No, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry for disturbing you. Just go back. Go about your day. No, it's all good. Yes, my health is low. Hold on. I wonder if this person will be friendly. We're apparently very you trusting. The shrine of Azura, the goddess of twilight, if you'll excuse me, in the mountains to the northeast. I'll mark it on your map. Hey, a shrine. That sounds like the sort of thing that a uh, monk would want to visit. But first, winter hold. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Hey, I think that's the college. Excuse me, please leave me alone, wolves. I've had a very bad day. Thank you. Whistling in the mine. Whistling. Whistling. The Imperials think we need their laws. Oi. I'm on my way to Windhelm to join up with the Stormcloaks. Ulfric has the right of it. Okay, I'm staying out of your politics. Okay, we're close enough. We can remove our own marker. That is a very... <laughs> Very large building. Aha, Winterhold. We finally made it. We didn't get lost this time. Jarl's house, frozen hearth. If your hearth is frozen, that's not terribly helpful.
there was something here. Okay. The way is dangerous and the gate will not open. You shall not gain entry. Uh why won't I gain entry? Forgive me. Most who arrive here do so because they have heard of the college beforehand. This is the College of Winterhold. A safe haven for mages in Skyrim. A place of wisdom and arcane knowledge. Perhaps. But what is it you expect to find within? Books. Um, no, definitely no, maybe, but probably most likely. Ha, huh. humor is often in short supply here, but I sense that perhaps you're after more than just that. It would seem that the college has what you seek. The question now is what can you offer the college? Not just anyone is allowed inside. Those wishing to enter must show some degree of skill with magic. A small test. I can do that. No, I'm afraid I don't know anything of the sort. Excellent. A standard spell for one skilled in destruction magic is the fire vault. Casting one at the seal on the ground here would be sufficient. Okay. I, look I think to we have fire bolts. <laughs> No, we have flames. Do we have a book? No. The college is an asset to Skyrim, even if it goes unnoticed or unappreciated. Uh, what have you got for sale? Incantations for those with the talent to cast them. Fire rune, fire bolt. We don't have enough money for it. What? You're only going to give us 18 for that. Hold on, I need it's to go sell some pleasure. things. I'm sorry, could you describe the smell? I summoned horrible monsters. I'll sell just about any. And then exploded. What did you do? It was a minor miscalculation. I've already corrected it for future experiments. Box. This. This is why people have a problem with Just your say the word if you need a drink or something to eat. I don't deal with any college applicants these days, so don't bother asking. Ranmere beg a drink from you yet? That's gold wasted, friend. Oh wait, where's my list? We may not have as much to offer as White Run or Solitude, but I have we'll do what list. we can to make your stay a pleasant one. Words of Clan Mother. All right then. How long are we going to let Ranmere drink himself into a stupor? When will enough nope, be? Nope, not there. As long as he keeps paying, I suppose. He keeps himself. Arcturian Heresy. Oh, are you sure? I don't think it's on the list, but it has the word heresy, screen. so I'm intrigued. By the Underking. With his god destroyed, Wolfparth has finds it hard to keep his form. He staggers out of the Red Mountain to the battlefield beyond. The world has shaken and all of Morrowind is made of fire. A strong gale picks up and blows his ashes back to Skyrim. Wolfharth adopts and is adopted by the Nords then. Ysmir the Grey Wind, the Storm of Kine... Wait, what? That's a complete sentence, apparently. Yzmir, the Grey Wind, the Storm of Kine. I don't know what that means. But through Lorcan, he lost his national identity. All he wants the Nords for is to kill the Tribunal. He raises a storm, sends in his people, and is driven back by the Tribunal forces. The Dunmer are too strong, too strong now. Wolfharth goes underground to wait and strengthen and reform his body anew. Oddly enough, it is Almalexia. Almalexia. 
who disturbs his rest, summoning the Underking to fight alongside the tribunal against Adasum Dir Kamal, the Aviri demon. Wolfarth disappears after Adasum is defeated and does not return for 300 years. That's a pretty long time. It is the rumbling of the Greybeards that wakes him. Though the Empire has crumbled, there are rumors that a Chosen One will come to restore it. This new Emperor will defeat the Elves and rule a united Tamriel. Naturally, Wolfarth thinks he's the figure of the prophecy. Oh, don't we all? He goes directly to High Hrothgar to speak to the Greybeards. When they do, Yzmir is blasted to ash again. This guy keeps turning to ash. He is not the chosen one. It is a warrior youth from High Rock. As the gray wind goes to find this boy, he hears the Greybeard's warning. Remember the color of betrayal, King Wolfharth. The Western Reach was at war. Kublacane, the king of Falk Falkreath in West Cyrodiil, uh, was a, in a bad situation. To make any bid at unifying the Colovian estates, he needed to secure his northern border where the Nords and the Reachmen had been fighting for centuries. He allies with Skyrim at the Battle of Old Hroldan, leading his forces at Hjalti Earlybeard. Hjalti was from the island kingdom of Elcair in High Rock and would become Tiber Septim, the first emperor of Tamriel. There are a lot of words and names here and I don't know what any of it means. Hjalti was a shrewd tactician, and his small band of Colovian troops and Nord berserkers broke the Reachman line, forcing them be back beyond the gates of old Horldan. A siege seemed impossible as Hjalti could expect reinforcements from Falkreath, which is different from Falkenreath, which is in the in Skyrim, I guess. But anyway. That night a storm came up and visited Hjalti's camp. It spoke with him in his tent. Adan Hjalti went up to the gates and to and the storm followed just above his head. Arrows could not penetrate the winds around him. He shouted down the walls of old Hroldan, and his men poured in. After their victory, the Nords called Heraltis Halos, or Storm Crown. Kublacane, with his new invincible general, unifies a West Cyrodiil in, a, in under a year. No one can stand before Hjalti's storms. The Underking knows that if Hjalti were to become the Emperor of Tamriel, he must first capture the Eastern Heartland. Hjalti uses them both. He needs Kublacane in the Kolovian estates, where foreigners are mistrusted. It is obvious why he needs Yzmir. They march on the east, the battle mages surrender before their armies, and they take the citadel before Kublacane can be crowned. Hjalti secretly murders him and his loyalist contingent. These assassinations are blamed on the enemies of Kublacane, which, for political reasons, are still the western reach. Zuranarktis, the grand battle mage, not the underking, then crowns Hjalti as Tiber Septum, new emperor of all Cyrodiil. After he captures the imperial throne, Septum finds the initial administration fully united Cyrodiil a time, consuming task. He sends the Underking to deal with the imperial expansion into Skyrim and High Rock. Yzmir, mindful that it might seem as if Tiber Septum is in two places at once, works behind the scenes. This period of level-headed statesmanship and diplomacy, this sudden silence heretofore, unknown in the roaring tales of Telosian conquest, are explained away later. The assassination story is embroidered. Now it is popularly Talos's own throat that was cut. Hmm. We're mythologizing our own history, apparently. The human kingdoms are conquered, as even Hammerfell, who, whose capture was figured to be an arduous task. The Underking wants a complete invasion, a chance to battle their foreign wind spirits himself. But Tiber Siptum refutes him. He has already made a better plan, one that will seem to legitimize his rule. Cyrodiil supports the losing side of a civil war and in are invited in. Finally, the Empire can turn its eyes to the Elves. The Underking continues to press on Cyber Tiber Septum, the need to conquer Morrowind. The Emperor is not sure that is a wise idea. He has heard of the, the Tribunal's power. The Underking wants his vengeance, and reminds Tiber Septum that fated to conquer the Elves, even the Tribunal. Arctis advises against the move, but Septim co covets the Ebony in Morrowind, as he sorely needs a source of capital to rebuild Cyrodiil after 400 years of war. The Underking tells him that with the Tribunal dead, Septim might steal the Tribunal's power and use it against the High Elves, certainly the oldest enemies of Lorcan. 
predating even the tribunal. Somerset Isle is in the farthest thing is the farthest thing from Tiber Septim's mind. Even then, he is planning to send Zurin Arctis to the king of Alinor to make peace. The Epony need wins out in the end. The Empire invades Morrowind and the Tribunal give up. When certain conditions of the Armistice include not only a policy of non-interference with the Tribunal, but also, in the Underking's eyes, a validation of their religious beliefs, Yzmir is furious. He abandons the Empire completely. This was the betrayal of the Greybeard spoke of, or so he thinks. Without the Underking's power, all ideas of conquering Tamriel's vanish. Would have been nice, Septim thinks, but let's just worry about Cyrodiil and the human nations. Already there's a rebellion in Hammerfell. Pieces of Numidium trickle in, though. Deborah Septim, always fascinated by the dwarves, has Zur and Arctis researched this grand artifact. In doing so, Arctis stumbles upon some of the stories of the War of the Red Mountain. He discovers the reason the Numidium was made and mo some of its potential. Most importantly, he learns of the Underking's place in the war, but Zurin Arctis was working from an incomplete plan. He thinks it is the heart of Lorcan's body that needs needed to be powered by the Numidium. While Zurin Arctis is raving about his discovery, the prophecy finally becomes clear to Tiber Septim. This Numidium is what he needs to conquer the world. It is his destiny to have it. He contacts the Underking and says that he was right all along. They should kill the Tribunal, and they need to get together and make a plan. While the Underking was away, he, he realized the true danger of Dagoth Ur. Something must be done, but he needs an army, and his old one is available again. The trap is set. The Underking arrives and is ambushed by Imperial Guards. As he takes them on, Zur and Arctis uses a soul gem on him. With his last breath, the Underking's heart roars a hole through the battle mage's chest. In the end, everyone is dead. The Underking has reverted back to Ash, and Tiber Semptum strolls in to take the soul gem. When the Elder Council arrives, he tells them about the second attempt on his life, this time by the trusted battle mage, Zurin Arctis, who is attempting a coup. He has the dead guards celebrated as heroes, even the one who is blasted to Ash. He warns against Cyrodiil about the dangers within, but says the solution to the dangers without, the Mantella. The mid, again, so many words, I don't know what any of this means. But I'm kind of digging the story of intrigue and, and betrayal. The Numidium, while not the god Tiber Septum the Dwemer, and the Dwemer hoped for, the Underking was not exactly Lorcan after all, it does the job. After its work on Somerset Isle, a new threat appears, a rotting undead wizard who controls the skies. He blows the Numidium apart, but it pounds him into the ground with its last fl flailing, leaving only a black splotch. The Mantella falls into the sea, seemingly forever. Meanwhile, Tiber Septim crams himself the first Emperor of Tamriel. He lives until he is 108, the richest man in history. All aspects of his early reign are rewritten. Still, there are conflicting reports of what happened. And this is why there is such confusion over the such question as, Why does Alcair claim to be the birthplace of Talos? while other sources say he came from Atmora. Why does Tiber Septim seem to be a different person after his first Roaring Conquests? Why does Tiber Septim betray his Battle Mage? Is the Mantella the heart of the Battle Mage, or is it the heart of Tiber Septim? Tiber Septim is succeeded by his grandson Pelagius I. Pelagius is not of the same caliber. In truth, he's a little nervous, and with all these provinces, then an advisor shows up. I was friends with your grandfather, the Underking says. He sent me to help you run the Empire. Thank you. I want to check something really quickly. So this was written by the Underking, too. So that's some interesting... It's not my place to get involved in their family's business, remember? Uh, unreliable narrator right there. Yellow Book of Riddles. It's interesting, the, the answers are written backwards. A metal neither black nor red, as heavy as man's golden greed. What do you, what you do to stay ahead with friend or arrow or steed? It's lead. If you lie to me, I will slay you with my sword. I will tell you the truth. I will slay you with a spell. What must you do to stay alive? 
Can't read this backwards. You will slay me with a sword. Hmm. Book of Daedra, Antecedents to Dwemer Law. We're not reading a book of law. That sounds super boring. Yeah, just see if this gives us a skill or something. Yeah, man. Frontier Conquest. Ooh. Oh, I so want to steal it, but... Uh, our, our monk is good. Our monk is good. Will not steal. If there's anything you need, just let me know. I'm looking mm -hmm. to sell you stuff. Just say the word if you need a drink or something to eat. I'll sell just about anything if it's worth my time. Keep that in mind, will you? Where's the door? There it is. to believe I ever complained about Riften being cold. They say Ulfric Stormcloak murdered the High King with his voice, shouted him apart. Um. I don't know how to activate waiting. On a controller. There we go. Step zero has redeemed a father joke. Oh, you're going to love this one. Why doesn't everyone just store their things in ceramic jars? Because you really need to earn it. You're not planning any trouble. What can I do for you, friend? I'll sell just about anything if it's worth my time. Keep wasn't by choice. Options without the coin to pack up and leave. I just very funny. I'm sure you so I, I just want to sell you some times, made a few bad deals. Yeah, it was I shouldn't. I have don't care. I don't care about your story. Something. What was I? I'm not very listening, monk today. I don't even care anymore. You want to check it out? Fine. I'll sell you. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. I think that's enough. Until next time. We need to buy that uh, spell. No matter what. What Take have you got for sale? Firebolt. It's been a pleasure. Read that book. Okay. Just loaded. Noticed or appreciated. Well done indeed. I think you'll be a superb addition to the college. Welcome, apprentice. We did it. I'll lead you across the bridge. Once you're inside, you'll want to speak with Mirabel Irvine, our master wizard. Please follow me. No, I probably won't really care about talking to Mirabel. Unless she has books. 
much knowledge lies within the college's walls. The beacon of Gondor is lit. Rohan rides. Winter holds glory days may lie behind it, but the college lives on. Uh, Y'all should probably get a stonemason on this. statue I believe I've made myself rather clear yes of course I'm simply trying to understand the reasoning behind the decision hey Ms. Zook mind it's gone pretty well yourself your every win, but I'm afraid you'll find that Thalmor received no such treatment here you are a guest of the college here at the pleasure of the Archmage I hope you appreciate the opportunity yes of course the Archmage has my thoughts. Do some squats while we're waiting. Then we're done here. I'm supposed to talk to you, but, uh... I have... Are you quite sure we need to be speaking? Archmage's quarters. The Arcanium! Oh, I just got back from clothes shopping. Exciting. Books. No, they're they're locked. Oh, we've already read Legend of the Red Eagle. Rise and fall of the blades. I don't want to see you treating any of these books poorly. Oh, we you are now in the Arcanium. Ah, uh, yes. Charge. Cold weather is coming. Might as well be my own little plane of oblivion. Disrupt my Arcanium, and I will have you torn apart by angry Atronox. Now, do you require assistance? A mage is only as good as what he knows. I try to make sure as much knowledge is available as possible. We've been keeping this collection since the Second Era. Books have come and gone during that time, but it's mostly intact. Yeah, I, really, I, I think Orag Groshub is one of the, my favorite characters in this game, oddly enough. I think he's really cool. Uh, what have you Assorted books, got for scrolls. sale? I'm sure you'll find something useful. He, he's, he's very... Um, Salty might be the right word. I uh, don't think the Argonian account is one we need. Uh, I think Olaf and Dra the dragon is on the list. Yep, that's on the list. That's only six coins. We could get that. The firmament. Nope. Ransom of Zarek. Uncommon taste is not on the list, but let me mark off the ones we just got. All right then. Oh, but I want I want those books. I just want to see what they are. 
We'll keep looking around the library first. Fall from Glory, Lost Legends. So for those who are tuning in for the first time, what we're doing is uh, we're looking for all the mythological books available in Skyrim to kind of study the uh, mythology of the world. Uh, kind of basically role-playing a, uh, a monk from Cyrodiil. And Ransom of Sarek is one we just got. Ethereum Moors, Cats of Skyrim. Does this have actual pictures of cats? No. I don't care about a book about cats. I want pictures of cats. I want pictures of spider cat. Yungle and the sea ghosts. Yeah, this the game does have an impressive amount of lore. Oh, we didn't have to buy Olaf and the Dragon. We could just write it right there. Oh, well. Book of the Dragonborn. Hey, that's not us. Biography, biography. Mist of Shigaroth. Well, it's on the list. By Mimophonus. Shigaroth invents music. Okay. I'm, I'm down for this. In the earliest of days, in a time when the world was still raw, Shigarath decided to walk amongst the mortals. He donned his guise as a gentleman with a cane and moved from place to place without being recognized. After eleven days and eleven nights, Shigarath decided that life among the mortals was even more boring than his otherworldly existence. What can I do to make their lives more interesting, he said to himself. At the same moment, a young woman nearby commented wistfully to herself, The sounds of the birds are so beautiful. Shagarath silently agreed with her. Mortals could not make the beautiful and inspired calls of birds. Their voices were wretched and mundane. He could not change the nature of mortals, for that was the purview of other Daedric princes. However, he could give them tools to make beautiful sounds. Shagarath took hold of the petulant woman and ripped her... So Whoa! That got dark quit. Shagaroth. Okay, he made music out of a woman. Literally. Ew. Shigaroth, and I will keep saying it that way, step zero. And King Lyander. King Lyander was known to be an exceedingly rational man. He lived in a palace that was small, simple, structured, small, simple structure unadorned with art and ugly to look upon. I do not need more than this, he would say. Why spend my gold on such luxuries when I can spend it on my armies or on great public works? His kingdom prospered under his sensible rule. However, the people did not always share the king's sense of practicality. They would build houses that were beautiful to look upon, although not necessarily very practical. They devoted time and energy to works of art. They would celebrate events with lavish festivals. In general, they were quite happy. King Lyander was disappointed with more than... More of them did not follow his example and lead frugal, sensible lives. He brooded on this for many years. Finally, he decided that his subjects simply didn't understand how much more they could accomplish if they didn't waste their time on frivolous activities. Perhaps he needed, perhaps he reasoned, they just needed more examples. The king decreed that all new buildings must be simple, unadorned, and no larger than was necessary for their function. The people were not happy about this, but they liked their king and respected the new law. In a few short years, there were more plain buildings than ornate ones. The citizens used the money saved to make and buy even more lavish art and hold more excessive celebrations. Once again, King Lyander decided to provide them with a strict example of how beneficial it would be to use their time and resources for more practical purposes. He banned all works of art in the city. The people were quite put out by this, and they knew that their king was doing what he thought was best for them. However, human nature is so easily denied. Ain't that the truth? In a few more years, the city was filled with plain, simple buildings and devoid of any art. 
However, the people now had even more money and time to devote to their parties and festivals. With a heavy heart, King Lyander decided that his people were to be treated like children. And like all children, they needed rules and discipline laid down by great figures of authority to make them understand what was truly important in life. Uh, not so sure about that psychology. He decreed that there should be no revelry in the city. Singing, dancing, and music were all banned. Even food and drink were limited to water and simple foodstuffs. The people had had enough. Revolt was out of the question since King Lyander had a very well-trained and equipped army. They visited the shrines and temples to in droves, praying to all the gods and even to some of the Daedric princes that King Lyander would revoke these new oppressive laws. Shegaroth heard the, their pleas and decided to visit King Lyander. He appeared to the king in his dreams as a field of flowers, each with arms instead of petals and, and the face of, of the mad god in the center. I am the lord of the creative and the lord of the deranged. Since you have no use for my gifts of creativity, I have decided to bless you with an abundance of my other gift. From that day forward, every child born in the city was born into madness. Since infants do not reveal illnesses of the mind, it was several years before this was realized. The king's own son was among the victims, suffering from seizures and delusions. Yet King Lander refused to change his laws. When his son Glint was twelve years old, he stabbed his father while Lyander was sleeping. With his dying breath, King Lyander asked, Why? His son replied, It is the most practical thing I could do. The new young king ordered all palace servants slaughtered. He ordered a grand festival to celebrate his new reign and repeal of Lyander's laws. He served the crowds a stew made from... Oh my goodness! No! He ordered the east-facing walls of every building to be painted red, hmm, and the west-facing walls painted in stripes. He declared that all citizens wear ornate masks on the back of their heads. He then burned down the palace and began construction of a new one. In the new palace, the young king ordered his personal chambers to not have any doors, for fear that small woodland creatures would attack him. He ordered that it have no windows, for fear that the sun and moon were jealous of him and plotting his death. And thus ended the line of King Lyander. The people of the city returned to their grand works of art and raucous celebrations. They talked and acted as if they still had a living king, and even kept up the palace, using it to house and care for their mad children. Shagarath was mightily pleased with this outcome. From the day forward, the city was blessed with more than the normal number of gifted artists and deranged citizens. It seems a barren... I'm thinking this Shigarath's kind of messed up. I mean, this is kind of like a, a tale of hubris and, and warning of man's folly writ large. And yeah, these you're right, Mesozoic Mind, they do remind me of the Watchers from the Book of Enoch. I don't think I can stomach another one of those, knowing that how they end. Our monk has a weak constitution. Restoration is a perfectly valid. I'll do it is real. I'll take your word for it. Full of magic, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Fall from glory. No, I don't want to read the skull. Nightingales, fact or fiction? Um, wait a minute. Is this book claiming birds aren't real? We'll read that to... Get some um, points of interest on our map. Chances folly... Killing before you're killed. I mean, that is usually the way it goes. Birds are fake news, just like baby pigeons. <laughs> baby pigeons are fake news. Okay, duly noted. Olaf and the Dragon by Adonato Liatelli. It's a very Italian name. <coughs> Excuse me. 
One of the more colorful legends in Nord folk- folklore is the tale of Olaf One-Eye and Numenex. Haven't we read this one? I remember talking about Numenex. Oh, well. Um, yeah, we read that one last time. Oh, I just forgot to mark it off. Your Italian ancestors appreciate that very Italian name. Fair enough. The Ransom of Zarek, Ancient Tales of the Dwemer, Part 1, Maribor Soul. Salamil stood in her garden and read her le- and read the letter her servant had brought to her. The bouquet of joss roses in her hand fell to the ground. For a moment it was as if all birds had ceased to sing and the cloud had passed over the sky. Her carefully cultivated and structured haven seemed to flood over the darkness. We have thy son, it read. We will be in touch with thee shortly with our ransom demands. Zarek had never been made it had never made it as far as Akgun after all. One of the brigands on the road, orcs probably, well, let's, let's jumping to conclusions, or cursed Dunmer, again, jumping to conclusions ar- around which species it is, must have seen his well-appointed carriage and taken him hostage. Jalamil clutched at her at a post for support, wondering if her boy had been hurt. He was but a student, not the sort to fight against the well-armed men, but had they beaten him? It was more than a mother's heart could bear to imagine. Don't tell me they sent the ransom note so quickly, called the famili- family voice. And a familiar face appeared through the hedge. It was Zarek. Jalamil buried, hurried to embrace her boy, tears running down her face. What happened? she cried. I thought thou had been kidnapped. I was, said Zarek. Three huge soaring Nords attacked by carriage on the firm Vorn Pass. Brothers, as I learned, named Matthias, Olin, and Korg. They should have seen these men, mother. Each one of them had trouble fitting through the front door, I can tell thee. What happened, Jalamil repeated. Were thou rescued? I thought about waiting for that, but I knew they'd send off a ransom note, and I know how thou dost worry. So I remembered what my mentor at Akgun always said about the remaining calm, observing thy surroundings and looking for thy opponent's weaknesses. Zarek grinned. It took a while, but because these fellows were truly monsters, and and then I, w- when I listened to them bragging to one another, I realized that vanity was their weakness. What did thou do? They had me chained at their camp in the woods not far from Kale, on the high knoll overlooking a wider river. I heard one of them, Korg, telling the others that it would take the better part of an hour to swim across the river and back. They were nodding in agreement when I spoke up. I could swim that river and back in thirty minutes, I said. Impossible, said Korg. I can swim faster than a little whelp like thee. So it was agreed that we would dive off the cliff, swim to the center island, and return. As we went to our respective rocks... Korg took it upon himself to lecture me about all the fine points of swing, the importance of synchronized movements of the arms and legs for maximum speed, how essential it was to breathe after only third or fourth stroke, not too often to slow thyself down, but not too often to lose one's air. I nodded and agreed with all his fine points. Then we dove off the cliffs. I made it to the island and back in a little over an hour, but Korg had never returned. He had dashed his brains at the rocks at the base of the cliff. I had noticed the telltale undulations of water, underwater rocks, and had taken the diving rock on the right. But thou returned, Jalamil astounded. Was not then what when thou escaped? It was too risky to escape then, said Zarek. They could have easily caught me again, and I wasn't keen to be blamed for Korg's disappearance. I said I did not know what happened to him. And after some searching, they decided he had forgotten about the race and had swum ashore to hunt for food. Not a terribly bright fellow. I could not see how I could have had anything to do with his disappearance, as fully visible as I was. Throughout my swim, the two brothers began making camp along the rocky cliff edge, picking an ideal location so that I would not be able to escape. One of the brothers, Matthias, 
uh, began commenting on the quality of the soil and the gradual incline of the rock that circled around the bay below. Ideal, he said, for a foot race. I expressed my ignorance of the sport, and he was keen to give me details of the proper technique for running a race. He made absurd faces, showing how one must breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, how to bend one's knees to, to the proper angle on the rise, the importance of sure foot placement. Most important, he explained, was that the runner keep an ag aggressive but not too strenuous pace if one intends to win. It is fine to run in, in second place through the race, he said, provided one has the willpower and strength to pull out in the end. I was an enthusiastic student, and Math Matthias decided that we would run quick race around the edge of the bay b before the night fell. Olin told us to bring back some firewood when we came back. We began at once down the path, skirting the cliff below, followed by his advice about breath, gait, and foot placement. But I ran with all my power right from the start. Despite his much longer legs, I was a few paces ahead as we wound the first corner. With his eyes on my back, Matthias did not see the gap, gape in the rock that I jumped. He plummeted over the cliff before he had a chance to cry out. I spent a few minutes gathering some twigs before I returned to Olin at camp. Now thou were just showing off, frowned Jalamil. Surely that would have been a good time to escape. Thou might think so, agreed Zarek, but thou had to see the topography. A few large trees and then nothing but shrubs. Olin would have seen my absence and caught up with me in no time, and I would have had a hard time explaining Matthias' absence. However, the brief forage around the area allowed me to observe some of the trees close up, and I could formulate my final plan. When they got back to camp with a few twigs, I told Olin that Matthias was slowly coming along, dragging a large dead tree behind him. Olin scoffed at his brother's strength, saying it would take him... Take him time to pull up a living tree by the roots and drop it on the bonfire. I expressed reasonable doubt. I'll show thee, he said, ripping up a ten-foot-tall specimen effortlessly. Well, that's scarcely a sapling, I objected. I thought thee could rip up a tree. His eyes followed mine to a magnificent, heavy-looking one at the edge of the clearing. Olin grabbed it and began to shake it with tremendous force to loosen its roots from the dirt. With that, he loosened the hive from the uppermost branches, dropping it on to, down onto his head. That was when I made my escape, mother, said Zarek, in conclusion, showing a little schoolboy pride. While Matthias and Korg were at the base of the cliff, and Olin flaying about, engulfed by a swarm, Jalamil embraced her son once again. Publisher's note. Well, that was a classic story of... It, it reminds me of uh, Bilbo tricking the... Um, the uh not orcs um trolls trolls into talking all day until the night ro or until the sun rose i was reluctant to publish the works of maribor soul but the university of Gwellen press asked me to ed edit this edition i decided to use this as an opportunity to set the record straight once and for all scholars do not agree on the exact date oh, okay so this is just i'm not going to read all of that but that looks like interesting study of the nature of that book. So we're probably going to have to work our way through this quest line if we want into those bookshelves fully. So for now, we're going to go check out that shrine. I believe I've made myself rather clear. You may be used to the Empire Vow. Yeah. The shrine up there, because a shrine sounds like the sort of thing that the uh, monk would want to go visit. We only have to climb up into the snowy mountains. Stay out of trouble, Imperial. Chicken.
You think the giant statue is the shrine? I'm not sure. I'm not entirely convinced. A mountain goat? I love your albums! a new favorite spell. all sorts of things to discover over here. Interesting yurt construction. Sightless pit. No, I, I like seeing. Thank you. That is a seriously large statue. Actually, yeah, we'll take that book. Um, excuse me, skeleton, you just levitated. I feel like Phoebe from uh, the Magic School Bus. And my old school skeletons didn't attack us. three copies of that? Okay, that's a weird weird thing to have skeleton, but you do you. Let's see, how do I favorite...
You made me do this. You made me the bad guy. See what are our current boots? 15? Or 7? To 11? Oh, that's a nice jump. Um. Oh yeah, we need to level up. I feel like stamina would be good to help us run away. have a skill point to spend. Honestly, maybe just the healing magic. Yeah, that's pretty good. Drop the, the magic used by half on healing spells. Given how much we kind of have to run away from fights. Interesting imagery, holding a star and a, a moon. Hello. Azura has seen your coming, traveler. It was not curiosity, but fate that has led you here. What is this place? This shrine was built by the Dunma. As our land was scorched by fire and brimstone, Azura's prophecies led us to safety. She is a Daedra, a powerful being who watches from beyond our mortal plane. She has chosen you to be her champion. Um. No. There is no one else. But very well. I cannot force you to accept your destiny. Sorry, Azura. I'm, I'm more a scholar than a champion. But I dig the, um, like, veil of flowers. It's really cool. It's really beautiful. Which is an interesting combination for a deity who's about, or divine figure who's about uh, shadow and what, and night to have flowers. Nightshade, maybe? Cannot mine. I don't have a pickaxe. I forgot mining was in this game, to be honest. Um, I think what we'll want to actually do is we probably want to... continue this quest because we need to go talk to the monks uh, of High Hrothgar but to do that we need to talk to we need to progress through this the main quest chain for a bit Damn those gray mains to oblivion. They want to back the storm cloaks. They'll get what's coming. You tried mercenary work? <laughs> Sometimes I miss the soldier's life, but when I hold my daughter in my arms, I know I made the right choice. Aw, oh, that's sweet. So, you were at Helgen. You saw this dragon with your own eyes? I did. I'm going to go for the politically neutral answer. Was right. what do you say now, hey, by Yzmir. That's the, uh, the, trust in the strength of our walls? that's the person who kept turning to ash dragon? in the one myth we talked about. We should send troops to Riverwood at once. It's in the most immediate danger. If the Jarl dragon of is lurking in the mountains. That is a provocation. He'll assume we're preparing to join Ulfric's side and attack him. We should Enough. not. 
I'll not stand idly by while the dragon burns my hold and slaughters my people. Irileth, send a detachment to Riverwood at once. Yes, my Jarl. If you'll excuse me, I'll return to my duties. That would be best. Well done. You sought me out on your own initiative. You've done Whiterun a service, and I won't forget it. Here, take this as a small token Ooh. of my esteem. Do, do you have there something more in a robe? Another thing you could do for me. Suitable for someone of your particular talents, perhaps. Come, let's go find Faringar, my court wizard. He's been looking into a matter related to these dragons and rumors of dragons. So, currently an armor value of 25, oh, but that's heavy armor. Meh. Jarl Balgruf the Greater. Is there Balgruf the Great and Balgruf the Greatest? Faringar, I think I found someone who can help you with your dragon project. Go ahead and fill him in with all the details. Come to Dragon's Reach to discuss the ongoing hostilities, like the rest of the great warriors. Ah, indeed. The Jarl. Oh yes, he must be referring to my research into the dragons. Yes, I could use someone to fetch something for me. Well, when I say fetch, I really mean delve into a dangerous ruin in search of an ancient stone tablet that may or Ooh. may not actually be there. Stone tablet? Straight to the point. Sign me up. No need for tedious hows and whys. I like that. It may, be ha it may have a written complaint about better, copper. Right? I uh, learned of a certain stone tablet said to be housed in Bleak Falls Barrow. A dragon stone said to contain a map of dragon burial sites. Go to Bleak Falls Barrow. Find this tablet, no doubt interred in the main chamber, and bring it to me. Simplicity itself. Hey, Paul Books, Revenge. Good to see ya. You spent a lot of time. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time in this game, too. Off to Bleak Falls Barrow. It, it's one of those games that can just kind of suck you in and trap you. And yeah, we're going for a specific... Uh, so we're role-playing... Um... Can't really tell by his outfit right now because he's kind of been plopped in randomly. But uh, this is Anselm. He's a monk from Cyrodiil, and he's here to research the mythologies as recorded in Skyrim. Um, so this is why he's particularly interested in finding out about a stone tablet. It's right up his alley if it's about something mythological and theological. So we've spent some time researching, finding books, and we have a written list of all the mythology books of Skyrim that we're keeping our eyes out for. But I want to do some of the main quests. Because I want to get into High Hrothgar to talk to the monks. Because I feel like as a monk, I want to talk to other monks. Rotada. Rotada o'clock. Uh, so the gospel is Jesus saying, I have not come to bring peace, but to divide. Um, which is a difficult gospel to hear sometimes, especially in light of what's going on in the world. Uh, but Christ's words are ultimately a reminder of that, you know, a life of faith has consequences and not everyone's going to like that life. Um, but that we do not despair when there is division because we know that God is still with us, leading us to something. Um, so we, we address and we look at the, the realities head on and say this is a problem and you know do what we can to respond to the needs of, of the world and of peoples around us, but also to know that division does not end us. Yeah. 
So, uh, also an answer to your question, Paul Books. Revenge. Uh, I guess it's also important to say that there are certain rules. This character can't steal, can't start a fight uh, with another sentient being. Can, can definitely defend, but sometimes it's also worth it to just try and run away. Because, um, again, we are trying to be a monastic. And if someone, sometimes the NPCs will say, oh, I yield, I yield. If we do that, then uh, we have to let them go. He would not let me go, so. Uh, no, I figure in the world of um, Skyrim, magic is more normal. So, we actually use quite a bit of it. Don't know about mag uh, conjuring magic, but... Skyrim belongs to the Nords. I don't care about your politics! Case in point, here's some magic. Tell you what, you start running so I can stab you in the back. No! I was gonna let you go. But then you threatened me some more. Uh yeah, we found some books earlier. Um, turns out most of the books in the, uh, college, the mage's college, are behind a locked door. So, we're gonna have to befriend the, um, the mage in charge of the library to gain access, I think. But that's gonna require us going down the, uh, Time to end this little game. I, the little game? I didn't start a little game. Rude. So I'll share a father joke with y'all that uh, Step Zero redeemed for earlier on in the stream. Why isn't everyone just, you know, buried in one of these? You really have to earn it. Yeah, we, we've only uh, read two books so far today, Kit. Uh, thought we'd ex do a little bit of the main quest to... Um, one, make some, get some gold, because we're running low. And two, to continue down the plot so that we can find our way into the uh, Monastery of High Hrothgar. Because the door was locked, so we have to convince them that we should be allowed to join or 
hang out with them. Do you yield? If I can just stand up. No. You said enough. That means you don't get to attack me again. Uh, no, not like this. So we. Excuse me. You said enough. Rude. If you're done fighting, just stop fighting. So snake. Something whale. Probably bird. Nope, it's snake. Ooh, look at all these goodies. Read, leave. Where's the rat czar? Man, this rat problem in New York is just really getting out of hand. Those are smaller than the ones you see on the subway. <laughs> oh, it's sad because it's true. I will help you. I am trying. I have the biggest newspaper I can find. I'm not. Calm down. Over here. You did it. You killed it. Now cut me down before anything else shows up. Yes, the claw. I know how it works. The claw, the markings, the door in the hall of stories. I know how they all fit together. Help D me down. Can you share this you. information? You won't believe the power the Nords have hidden there. Sweet breath of arcade. Thank you. I, I will see if I can cut you down with my mace. <laughs> This makes sense. You fool. Why should I share the treasure with anyone? Um I just saved you, my dude. I, I'll just follow you. I knew it. Okay, you can fight the Draugr for me. Oh! Bad undead zombie Nord. And funk you on that. Oh. Our, our friend. Unalived, as they say on the TikTok.
Um, let's take another health. I'm thinking of doing one-handed here, just a little extra damage. His aliveness does seem to have stopped. <laughs> Let's read his journal. My fingers are trembling. The golden claw is finally in my hands, and with it the power of the ancient Nordic heroes. That fool Lucan Valerius has no idea what, that his favorite store decoration was actually the key to Bleak Fall Barrow. Now I just need to get to the Hall of Stories and unlock the door. The legend says there is a test that the Nords put in place to keep the unworthy away, but... When you have the Golden Claw, the solution is pa in the palm of your hands. Dad, don't trust these. I had reason. I smack harder. Ooh, an iron ingot. Don't know why. It... You know, by studying the artifacts that the Draugr were buried with can tell us what they... Kind of a little bit about their culture and what they thought about death. No, they they attacked me, so it's it's just just rewards. Plus, these are undead. So I'm I'm just doing them a favor by returning them to their natural state. Yeah, it's not an officially sanctioned resurrection of the body. I really like that concept of an officially sanctioned resurrection. Like St. Peter's there with his clipboard being like, uh, no, you're too early. You want to redo the dead parrot sketch with... the TikTok euphemisms which are there because uh, they'll get you banned if you use the actual words. This parrot is unalived. I think you have to do it in the uh, TikTok auto-reader voice. You know, when I went to seminary, I did not expect to go spelunking.
No, that was the inside thought of my uh, character, not necessarily me. Though to be fair, when I went to seminary, I didn't have any plans to go spelunking. Still don't, still haven't, and I'm happy to keep it that way. Redeading, I think. Returning to its natural form of stasis and immobility. Mushrooms. Okay, that looks like the way forward, so I want to explore the bottom of this chasm first. But yeah, I think uh, just philosophically speaking, we are returning them to this natural state by which they should be in. Nature is healing. You're a big one. No, 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 it's okay. I miss. Or apparently glitching them out. That is apparently also an acceptable answer. sword. Well, that'll sell for a pretty penny. And that will buy us more books! the line at the uh, end of towards the end of Galaxy Quest who wrote this episode a sadist serves no function but to be difficult. Yeah, basically. I love that arrows have no weight in this game, so you can just take as many as you want all the time. Because I'm pretty sure in Oblivion... I played Morrowind in Oblivion as well. I'm pretty sure in both of those every ten arrows is one pound.
about Skyrim? Nope. Weightless. You can carry an infinite amount. Grateful for small favors, yeah. That's fair. Um, so we have our golden claw, and you can see in the palm of your hand you have the key. Bear, bur, bur, bear moth owl. Owl, classic symbol of wisdom. I trust nothing. Going blind or doing that. Oh. I, I don't know how to Fusro Da in this on a controller. Why are you shouting at me? They're never going to believe this when I get back to Cyrano. Oh, hey, Dragonstone. Ancient Nord Sword of Cold. That's worth money. And money is worth books. Hey, it's the helmet, but from the the cover of the game. I don't think you feel too well right now. Probably not. I was just shouted at and attacked with a sword. I have, in fact, had better days. So, banded armor over... So steel armor steel armor's better, okay. But I do like yep. I do like the uh, better shield. It's our current helmet. I can't see it. Imperial light helmet. Twelve to seventeen. Yep. We will upgrade there. Probably just going to stick with the Iron Mace, honestly, and just sell the sword, because, again, money. And we have lots of scrolls, which is a single-use spell.
Get me out of here. After I check this chest. Some sort of uh, death memorial. But after the last death memorial tried to attack me, and I think my monk is uh, done trying to discover stuff just on sort of an archaeological level. Claim to be the best. Hmm. I just want to tell you some stuff. Pretty much anything to suit your needs. Basically, anything I'm not wearing right now. Just make it lighter for me. Don't forget to check inside the shop if you need anything. Those green apples you sold me the other day were delicious, aren't they? Well, they set some aside for myself. Oh, a fellow preacher. Let's talk to him. You have come to hear the word of Talos. Can you tell me about friend. Talos? If you seek knowledge about mighty Talos, you have most certainly come to the right person. In mortal life, Talos was a Nord, possessed of unmatched tactical skill, limitless wisdom, and the power to see into men's hearts. I don't know if I'd want that power. That sounds like it could be the power of the voice. Kinda difficult. And with it, he united the lands of men into a great empire. In southern lands, he was known by the name Tiber Sept. Here in Skyrim, we honor him by his proper Nord name. So great was his reign in life. When he ascended to the heavens, he was made Lord of the Divines. If you want to know more, I'm sure you can find any number of tomes on the subject. Yes, in fact, we have actually found one earlier today. I Terminology is clearly first era or even earlier. I'm convinced this is a copy of a much older text. Perhaps dating to Holdings of Jarl Gjallhund. So will essentially. After the Dragon War. If so, I could use this to cross-reference the name. Ah! The Dragon Stone of Bleak Falls Barrow! Seems you are a cut above the usual brutes the Jarl sends my way. Okay, that what's is next? Where your job ends and mine begins. The work of the mind, sadly undervalued in Skyrim. My associate here will be pleased to see your handiwork. She discovered its location by means she has so far declined to share with me. So your information was correct after all. And we have our friend Leave here to thank for recovering it for us. You went into Bleak Falls Barrow and got that? Yes. Nice work. Thank you. Just send me a copy when you've deciphered it. Farangar, you need to come at once. Leave me alone. The dragons were sighted nearby. You should come too. A dragon? How exciting. Where was it seen? What was it doing? I'd take this a bit more seriously if I were you. If a dragon decides to attack Whiterun, I don't know if we can stop it. Let's go. What's the hurry? There, there's a dragon. 
So that's the hurry. That tells me you came from the Western Watchtower. Yes, my lord. Tell him what you told me about the dragon. No, oh, that's right. We saw it coming from the south. It was fast, faster than anything I've ever seen. What did it do? Is it attacking the Watchtower? No, my lord. It was just circling overhead when I left. I never ran so fast in my life. I thought it would have come after me for sure. Good work, son. We'll take it from here. Head down to the barracks for some food and rest. You've earned it. Irlet, you'd better gather some guardsmen and get down there. I've already ordered my men to muster near the main gate. Good. Don't fail me. There's no time to stand on ceremony. I want you to go with Irelef and help you survive. Okay, we'll go. We'll go fight. You just had to say go fight a dragon. There's no time to stand on ceremony, my friends. I need your. No, I can't afford to risk both of you. I need you here working on ways to defend the city against these dragons. Now, as you command. One last thing, Irelef. This isn't a death or glory mission. I need to know what we're dealing with. Don't worry, my lord. I'm the very soul of caution. I envy you the chance to see this dragon up close. All right. Good luck. I hope you get there in time. It's no fun getting pushed. Yerlith, I can walk faster than you can run. There's a drag, Yerlith. Ulfred, patron of the great clan Battleborn. What are you getting? Irelith, it's okay. Keep moving. She'll catch up. Any day now, she'll catch up. I don't see a dragon. I see the after effects of a dragon. I feel like someone's supposed to be there. 
No signs of any dragon right now, but it sure looks like he's been here. I know it looks bad, but we've got to figure out what happened. And if that dragon is still skulking around somewhere... Spread out. Still here somewhere. Porky and Tor just got grabbed when they tried to make a run for it. I'm sure it's fine. Kill the dragon. What? Oh, that dragon. Near. Okay, it's now up close and personal. This is a minor problem. Everything is fine. That you're going to land. Like that. Whoop, whoop. Dang it. Ah. I was trying to open my menu and hit the wrong button. Well, I think that's actually going to be where we're going to call it for today. So, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, keep panicking. Uh, so, we'll, we'll fight the dragon again next time and move on with the quest, as, as well as finding more books, because we've got more cities to explore. Uh, but, Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in to Let Us Play. I've been your host, Father Evan. Uh, join us again on Monday for more Yeez 8, Lacrimosa of Dana. Uh, all next week should be the usual time at 2 p.m. <laughs> Paul's Book Revenge smells like barbecue. Yeah, barbecued monk. Brisket of monk. Um, Tuesday will be uh, Banjo-Kazooie for Retro Tuesday. That's what we're, so we're going to do for the month of November. Yes, October 31st is still November, but it's close enough, so whatever. Uh, and then more of this next Thursday for Spirituality Thursday. Uh, thank you to everyone who's liked, followed, subscribed, all that good jazz. Shout out to everyone over on YouTube. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, a great weekend. Take care, and God bless.